Hello again, Brandon here at the gallery in the studio. I've been painting some more small canvas stuff today, so I've got another quick video for you. This one is going to be of a lighthouse project. If you want to paint along with me on this one, let's get to it. All right, so what we have here is a six by eight canvas that we're going to be working on here, and we're going to do a little lighthouse scene. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, I have never painted a lighthouse of any kind before. I've done other landscapes, obviously, so hopefully we can pull this off. Um, I will go ahead and tell you that I'm using a reference photo here. We'll pop the photo up here. This is a lighthouse, uh, supposedly one of the most famous in the world. Uh, it's in Argentina, and so I'm going to be using this as my reference photo to paint this lighthouse scene um, so I have sketched in with pencil here I've done it ahead of time to save some time on the video but literally if you just look at the reference photo a little less than halfway down you got the rock coming in the lighthouse itself is sitting there it extends up to the top there's a distant mountain range so I just pencil sketch that in I'm gonna be starting with a half inch angled brush is what I'm gonna start with here the paint brushes and the paints will be listed down in the description I'm going to start out with a mixture of blue with a touch of black in it to gray it out a little bit and also add some titanium white to it and we're going to come in on this distant mountain range and see what color we have here probably needs a little more white in it I think I think that's a little better now this is essentially a blocking in layer like I do on most of my paintings and then we'll come back and work in our details so right now I'm not too concerned about any exact stuff going on I'm just getting color where it needs to be so there is that part of our mountain range and now let's work in a little bit of some sky back there and the sky is going to have, I guess I'll stick with what I've got here in this reference. I'm going to use that same mix I just did the mountain range with, but I'm going to add a lot more white to it. We're going to do, I guess, mostly a cloudy looking sky scene here as well that's as simple enough as anything so we're gonna go in here with that same color we just did our mountain with but we've added a lot more white to the mix and you can literally just touch your brush down into some more white in some other areas because we're gonna put obviously clouds and stuff in this so having some areas that are a little lighter than others a little darker than others is perfectly fine that's what we're going for trying to keep my brush strokes out of there as much as I can that'll get us started now while that's drying let's come in here with about the exact same color I'm gonna add just a hint of black to that to gray it out a little bit more and a fair bit more titanium white to that to do our water down here so there's really it's just the same mix that we did that sky with but I just ever so slightly grade it more with some black try to keep our land line our horizon line back there somewhat flat now our big giant rock here in the middle our island this thing is sitting on let's go into black a little bit of raw umber and come along the bottom edge of this rock island here where it's really dark and obviously being a rock island we don't have to worry about any straight edges down here and looking at our photo there some of these areas that darkness comes up pretty far on this corner again you don't have to follow this exactly but since i never painted a lighthouse before i figured heck let's look up a famous one 
maybe give it a go looking at that. Now for the rest of our rock island here, I'm going to kind of block it in in that color that mostly looks like it's a, oh, a drab kind of green to yellow with some brown in it there. So let's do some yellow ochre. A touch of green in it. And some of our raw umber here. Maybe just a hint of titanium white. Because realistically, I want a darker value of what I actually see, because I'm going to come back and highlight over it. So that's going to work for me right now. It probably looks really dark on the camera, but this is going to be the base of my rock. Um, so for the lighthouse itself, suppose I can do a blocking in layer with this large brush that I'm using, relatively speaking large brush, this half inch angle brush. We'll go into red, some medium red here and a tiny bit of that raw umber to darken it down. It's not quite dark enough. I need a little bit more brown in that. Now my paint's pretty thin right here because I've been sitting it on some paper towels with water on them, so I'm going to have to come back with some thicker stuff anyway. This will get us moving in the right direction of at least having something on canvas to look at. Alright, that's got our initial blocking in of colors for the most part handled, so give that a few seconds to dry and we'll move on to some sky work in the clouds I think. Alright for our sky back there we're gonna go into titanium white and a touch of black to gray it out a little bit. And then just a hint of our blue, thalo blue. Hopefully we'll get a little darker a little darker gray than what we've got on canvas here to start doing some cloud work. Now I'm still using this angle brush. And literally this is just going to come in and randomly drop some gray out here. And I'm just randomly kind of swirling this brush in here, creating some different marks, some different texture there. We can lighten up and soften up the edges if we want of some things. Just, you know, kind of let it happen basically. You don't think too much about what you're doing here. Just kind of drop it in there. We're going to make multiple passes of different shades of this anyway. So this is kind of just getting us our first layer Something like that. Now we're just gonna change the values of that up a little bit. So for uh, my next pass, I think I'll just add some white straight into that mix. Let's see what I get here. A little lighter gray now. And again, you can kind of randomly put this in here, but kind of keep in mind what you might want these clouds overall look like is you've got some gray areas out there. It'll be kind of the more shadowed um, areas that you want to keep and then you've got some other areas that you've got a little bit more light hitting that are more white but what you don't want here is any kind of monotone um, color that expands too much of this canvas at all because these clouds you're not going to have a lot of surface area in any one spot that is the same saturation of color or hue or whatever you want to call it so you want to avoid putting a large brush stroke of any one particular color across there so short brush strokes little circular motions now my last little highlight pass here is where i'm going to have the most white in my mix and i will try to create some individual maybe larger cloud shapes with it so drag my brush just a little bit further across the canvas than I had been doing.
and then soften the edges down. And obviously clouds change every few seconds in terms of how they look, so you don't have to worry about doing anything specific here. Just get something out there the way you like. There. Fairly happy with that, I think. Now our mountain range itself there, we need to go into that mix of color there, but we need to start detailing it out slightly, and I'm still using the same brush. We're going to lighten up our mountain range value here and gray it out some and put in, especially towards the tops here, some areas that are maybe some snow going on in there. Maybe some of this cloud is hovering over it. I'm just lightly touching the top peaks here of some of this and I'm not going for uniformity again here either. It's randomly touching some areas, bringing some of that grayer color down on top of that mountain. And then we just need to break up the monotony of that color that we put in there as our base layer with some lighter highlight here. It's going to suggest that is indeed some kind of mountains off in the distance there. Now I'm going to go in just a hint more titanium white at this point to give ourselves what little bit of snow might be stuck up here in some places and this is really not much paint I'm putting down here at all and I'm gonna start at the very tips here that I'm just kind of randomly touching in while I still have paint on the brush good paint on the brush that is and then as this brush loses this paint I'll start to drag it a little further down onto the mountain here all right, now again, we don't need to look for much detail back there at all. That's off in the distance, so in all honesty, I think that right there might be good enough. Hard to say. So, that I think we're going to call a done deal on our mountain range out there in the back. Now maybe we'll start to work on this foreground rock island here. So our foreground rock island here, I'm continuing for right now, I'm still working with this same half inch angular brush. So this darker stuff on the rock along the bottom, I'm going to bring it up randomly a little higher in a few places because I can see that in the photo this extends up. And again, it don't have to be perfect, it's just got a reference that's kind of helping us get an idea of what we want to accomplish here. So I'm going to bring it up randomly in a few places here, they're going to be showing some areas in the rock. Let's go into mostly all yellow ochre, just a touch of raw umber to brown it just a little. Let's come along here on the top side of this and just kind of touch in that yellowy looking stuff that's on this rock island. I don't know what that is growing out there. Again, I'm barely touching the ends of my brush here in some places. I don't want full coverage of it because it doesn't look like it's full coverage out there on the photo. It's just randomly growing across some of these rock faces. Whatever that stuff is. So drag it almost into a, a peak in a couple of places there where it looks like it's growing onto some stuff that's moving up the face of one side of a rock dropping down the side of another. Now we get a little bit more of a, a creamier deal going on here as this highlight color starts to move up. We're going to put just a little bit of titanium white in our mix and a little bit more of the raw umber into our mix. 
with this yellow ochre to make it a little creamier. It goes all across the top of this rock island. There's some areas that there's some color variation and we'll make a few highlight passes with smaller brushes once we kind of get the main colors in place here. All right, I think that's a pretty good initial first pass with that. So I think now might be the time to retire our larger brush we've been using and move to something smaller. So let's go to a little eighth inch flat brush and start working on a little bit more detail here. I'm gonna continue working on that rock for right now. I'm gonna go into a little more titanium white even yet here and a touch more yellow ochre create a little brighter creamier highlight here and let's go right along the tops of some of this create a top edge here and then just kind of dot and blot that color down the rock face a little bit not trying to cover everything up just literally just tap this brush onto the canvas as we come down that rock face here randomly touching it dotting it bring that down a little bit and this color is kind of touched in all along some of this rock face here again just dot it touch it in scrub it in some areas Now I see some green showing through out there too. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of green to this mix. Continue to work with the small brush the same kind of way. There's, there's definitely some green showing out there. So I've added just a little green to our mix that we'll put in randomly out here in some places. Now like I was saying, the more color variety and values of colors of things you put out there, it will just add to the overall realism and appearance of the end product. I'm going to go back into my black and raw umber mix of my dark stuff here and clean up a few edges. And we're going to create just some sharper edges in here along this rock face here. I'm just kind of touching that dark color up into where we brought some highlight in a few places just to create some areas of rock that are a little more defined and break up this bottom line a little bit so it's not so well or it doesn't look quite so nice and neat I mean we are talking about rock formation here so I need to break some of that up a little bit and then randomly dropping in some of that dark color in some places Again, just to break things up in some areas. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. A couple more highlight passes here. Let's go right into some yellow ochre and bring some more of that back into a few places. And a little more saturated color.
And it will add just a hint more of titanium white into that yellow ochre just for a few little bright spots. And I'm not going to get too carried away with that, but. I'm going to find a few little places down here along this dark stuff with just a little lighter highlight that you can kind of see some rock face. Just making a couple of lines with that highlight color. Real subtle in some places. Might not even be easy to see on the camera here, but now let's take our attention to our water. I'm gonna keep working with this same little small brush for right now. That distant water we don't have to do a whole lot with other than we're gonna go into some titanium white. It's thinned down a little bit. And just a hint of that blue that we were working with earlier. Just a real thin glaze of white and a little blue back there just to lighten up that water on the horizon. Use your brush to move horizontally across that. Flat left and right. Now as we start to move up in here a little closer we need to get into some darker colors that we're going to put in there that are in these waves and ripples so let's go into our blue a touch of black and some titanium white really thin marks here they're just kind of randomly out there to start giving the impression of some waves and some ripples now up here in this area in front of this thing where we've got the most um, reflection of water and things showing on. We're going to drag that color out in a couple of places. We need to reflect our rock island out there obviously so we need to get our rock color which is black and raw umber for the most part. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it this time though and then a little bit of titanium white and we're going to come in here below this rock with again right left horizontal kind of brush strokes I'm going to create some reflections by making the center part here pretty wide with your coverage but then draw a few kind of fingers of that color out to the right or left if that makes sense to you a few fingers of colors I'm not sure if that's technical or not and right now I'm not as dark as the rock color itself that's okay we're going to come back with some other passes and again you want to leave some of that water color visible so drag the reflection color out into it a little bit. Create little fingers of it moving out to the right and the left. Now I'm going to darken that mix up a little bit by adding a little bit more black to it, a little more raw umber back to it. Come in the center of that where we created that and, and darken up the middle of that a little bit. Darken up the middle of this. I'm going to bring it up here real close to the rock face in a few places and make a couple of little reflection marks really close to the island itself. Add a little bit more blue into that. Now on these outer edges here, again, not going for any kind of full coverage here with a little bit of that blue in the mix. Touch a few places out from your fingers that you made. Leaving a good bit of that watercolor still showing. That's pretty good on those reflections. Now we're bringing in from where we started over here to the side, we need to bring in our wave reflections to join up with what we've got going on here from our front of our island. And that's just a matter of making those wave reflections get a little bit wider as they come forward. Something about like that. Now all we're left with at this point is the lighthouse itself. 
Now, I'm not the greatest at drawing straight lines here, but we're going to do what we can. Hopefully, with this little eighth inch flat brush, I'm going to come into red and raw umber to create a real dark red value to start out with. See how straight of a line I can draw down this left hand side here. The base of this lighthouse is a little wider than the top, obviously. I'm going to fade this darker red color from the left. Out over into the middle and we're gonna say that what light we're getting is mostly coming from the right hand side here I think that's kind of what it looks like in the photo I've got so we'll just stick with that now I'm adding just a minuscule touch of titanium white to that as it moves over here to the right and I'm adding a touch of yellow ochre to that as well that will highlight that red out a little bit yellow ochre will highlight this red out as we move it over here to the right edge and that little door that's in there there's kind of a real dark area towards the top of it it looks like we'll add a lot of raw umber into some red to really have a dark spot maybe even a hint of black in that and then it's a slightly brighter value of red inside the door there so we'll go into that red with that little bit of yellow ochre brightening it up a little bit i think there's more white visible than that so i'll have to go back and correct that but that's okay We'll go with almost pure titanium white, not quite, just a hint, hint, hint of blue to it. And just a tiny touch of black in with the blue. It's a kind of grayed on that side. And yeah, we'll need to fade that into brighter white as we move around basically just bringing more white into your mix as you move around the corner here to the front And we need to get the top of our lighthouse basically the same way we did the base so we're gonna lighten up our red as we start to move around the corner here and back into that red with the yellow ochre in it to get over here to the far right edge Ooh, I drug my white in there. That's not good. Good thing is when you make an oof like that, you can paint over it. All right, we need to add our top up there. It looks like we've got an area that's just a little bit wider of red coming in. Let's move that out just a tad bit have to create our same kind of fade there so over on this right edge red with that yellow ochre mixed into it coming out on that left edge red with more raw umber in it now on top of the lighthouse there 
This is gonna be mostly black with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue, ever so slightly tiny bit of titanium white. I'm gonna create that little cylindrical column area that the light itself is sitting in. Piece or two of something right in the middle there. And then a top to it. Now I'll probably move to my liner brush here to create the rest of that. I need something real skinny. So let's liner brush into that same color we were just dealing with. We need the edges of our glass and we need a looks like a railing of some kind that pokes up here. We need to make ourselves a dark line here, mostly with raw umber, a hint of black. Separating these two areas right there. There's like a shadow underneath there. That's really about all we need to do, to be honest with you. And you can add more details to that if you like. For right now, we're going to say, there's our first attempt at a lighthouse project. I hope you guys had fun painting along with that one. I think I got a in result here that I'm pretty happy with so I'm gonna drop a signature on it here in a minute and we're gonna call this a done deal so until next time happy painting everybody